All right, viewers, welcome back. This is part three of the Big Ben 5A loud alarm movement rebuild, uh, clock rebuild. And in part two, we removed the uh, movement from the case and removed the um, balance wheel. And in this part, we're going to continue dismantling the movement, remove, uh, letting down the main springs, removing the time set knob, and um, getting the movement ready for... Uh, cleaning and I did a little bit of checking here. Let's go ahead and take um, Take the mainsprings out first And then I'll show you what I what I observed It'll be easier to see and in another video I talked about some tools that I made these are specifically for working on Big Ben clocks and it allows you to use a conventional letdown key to um, let the springs down and this this screws into the place of the ordinary uh, winding key like this okay it allows you to use just an ordinary winding key um, an ordinary letdown key to let the main spring down very safely like that so that there's no tent. There's still a little bit of tension on there, so we need to let it down some more. Okay. And as you can see, I pushed it a little too far, and it came off of the click spring, but uh, that's easily corrected during reassembly. And we'll just go ahead and leave the... Uh, let down square on there too. I have another screwdriver that fits these screws a little bit better. I really should get it out and use it, huh? All these tools I'm using are tools that I've bought used at junk shops and antique stores. And I've sharpened the blades or done whatever I need to do to them as needed. Now you've got to get the uh, great wheel out of the pinion shroud. Okay, there's the uh, spring barrel with the spring. There's the great wheel with the center hook. Okay, now we can get a better view of that center arbor. And there is a shoulder on the actual arbor there. So I'm not just going to be pressing against that hub there. This, this brass um, collar or hub is staked onto the shaft and is what gives the... Um, center friction, which means that's the friction that's needed for this wheel and pinion assembly to drive the arbor that has the minute hand attached to it. And that's very important because I'm going to be levering against that shoulder. I'm going to take a pair of pliers here that are about the right size. Then I'm going to use these pliers here and I'm going to lever the setting knob off just like that and then the dust washer comes off and the tension spring for the dust washer comes off and as you can see that that takes the knob off very nice and neatly okay we want to let the alarm side down and let's let this run a little bit to where the click is in a favorable position. Then go ahead and thread the uh, letdown adapter onto the shaft. 
Now, if this had stopped in a position, I might have to lift the repeat lever up to make it alarm, but it actually it was in just the right spot. Okay, that click looks like it's in a good spot now. You might have to use a screwdriver or something to hold the the click up off. Okay. Happened a little fast, but it's still under control. Just let it down until the mainspring is let down into the spring box that's on there and it feels like there's no residual tension uh, you know you got it and that looks pretty good we're gonna go ahead and unscrew that adapter we're gonna need it unscrewed on this side okay now we can remove the removable bridge that holds the um, alarm mainspring and we'll go ahead also and loosen that pillar nut off first okay on these it helps greatly to have a magnetized screwdriver when you're working on these. There's the alarm great wheel and barrel box and bridge all comes out as a unit. So we have the movement pretty well stripped down except for removing the trip staff. And this collar is threaded. It doesn't have any flats, but you just use a small pair of pliers and back it off enough until it unscrews with the fingers. Hold it there. Okay, we'll get the tweezers again. Remove these little washers. This washer that I'm trying to get a purchase on is rather important. Because it's a double D hold washer that fits the flats on that um, trip staff. And is what keeps the um, the nut there that we just unscrewed from unscrewing. There's the actual tension spring. Now, very importantly, on the inside, this washer is rather important because it's what gives the um, friction. So it's important you not lose it. might have to use something a little more aggressive than these tweezers to get it off. Usually there's enough oil residue on there that it'll stick to the back plate just like that. And there's the trip staff. And there's the actual tension washer. And the trip staff can be further disassembled by removing the alarm uh, cam wheel from the trip staff. Set those aside. At this point, the movement is disassembled enough that we're ready to remove the four pillar nuts and separate the movement plates.
this nut was not very tight. All West Clark pillar nuts have a definite orientation. You see this side is flat. And this side is, is countersunk around the perimeter of the hole. The countersunk always goes towards the plate. Some of these are still tight. I've backed them off a couple turns. Occasionally find that. I didn't actually loosen that one off. Okay, now the back plate lifts off the pillars. There's the back plate. There's all the components of the clock loaded into the front plate. We'll take a look at these. There's the escapement lever. These might stick in the holes just a little bit. There's the alarm escape wheel. There's the alarm second wheel. There's the alarm verge and the hammer arbor and assembly. just lift right out. There's the on-off staff for the alarm. There's the time side fourth wheel. So there's a little burr on the end of this wire where it was cut to length. And that was preventing the uh, wheel from lifting out, but there's the escape wheel and pinion. So I'm having the same trouble here with the third wheel. So there's the third wheel, and this is the repeat cam. Now we have the center wheel still is captive in the front plate because of the shuck pinion or cannon pinion as it's properly called. And I'm filling the amount of play that's in that and it's not it's not great, but there's a simple way to remove the shuck pinion. And this is a fairly hard but soft surface, so we're not going to damage the end of the arbor. Take a pair of pliers such as these here and rest the movement like this. Then using a suitable device as a hammer, hold the back end of the pliers up and smack right here. And you can normally drive the cannon pinion off. Now it might not be working because I'm not using an actual hammer. And I can't drive the, the right amount of force to it. And we really are getting ahead of ourselves because we should really should remove the repeat, the repeat lever. And we should do it from this angle over here. Go ahead and remove this. This is the alarm trip spring with the screw that holds it on. Okay. 
Now, the ideal side to do this from is over here. And I'm not being successful. I'm going to actually have to grab a hammer to do this with. So, we're about at the mark. Let's cut this off. We'll continue in the next part.